In one word, an altar is a platform. In one sentence, an altar is a spiritual negotiation table. An altar is a platform. It is a spiritual negotiation table. When we talk about altars, don't let the name confuse you. We are talking about spiritual negotiation tables. Mm. There are two kinds of altars essentially based on the results that they produce. There are two kinds of altars. Let's hurry up. Based on the results that they produce. Number one, there's what we call evil or demonic altars. Evil or demonic altars. We are classifying altars into two based on the results that they allow to happen to an individual, based on the results they allow to happen to a family, based on the results they allow to happen to a church, a ministry, a nation, a community. Number one, there are evil or demonic altars. What does this mean? A system of authorization that allows the operation of darkness to prevail within a life, a family, a community on legal grounds. I'll take that again. That an evil or demonic altar is a system of authorization set up to allow the operation of darkness, demons, operations of Satan within a life, within a family, within a community on legal basis demonic altars demonic altars causing mayhem consistently causing setbacks consistently please look at me there are individuals there are families you will be learning who are victims of these demonic altars there is absolutely nothing they do that works give that person a job his creativity is there. His intelligence is there. But in the presence of a demonic altar, something will happen within that company that brings a person out. To such a person, favor or defeat, or whatever, it makes no difference. Whether you give the person money or leave the person in that situation, the Lord has been determined already. Because like you'll be learning, altars have a voice and their voices give instructions and the realm of the spirit obeys their instructions to the latter. If they say destroy, that's the instruction that will happen until someone else says restore. If they say create setback among all the men, even if it's after 100 years, that is the result, that is the instruction that will be obeyed altars have voices and the realm of the spirit once it is legitimate it will obey it someone came tonight and as i'm teaching there's an anger rising in your spirit because this negotiation table you have to join today and say no way it comes to an end this evil speakings against my destiny evil speakings against my family in spite of the fact that i am saved i am not yet walking in the experience of liberty evil or demonic altars you find the presence of these altars in lives in families in communities do you know the reason why like you'll be learning we have invented a name for the consistency of obedience to the instructions that altars bring. We call them patterns. Patterns is an instruction that the same outcome must manifest in the life of people within a predefined family, a predefined region. That is why it doesn't matter whether one person is in America and another person is in Russia. It's the same experience they will have because it's an instruction coming from the realm of the spirit. Are we together? Hmm. Evil altars. Demonic altars. Number two. We have what we call righteous or godly altars. This is the second category of altars. Righteous or godly altars. 
someone watching online you need to ask someone around your house to come and sit down and listen because this is an answer to the many tragic situations happening around many families godly or righteous altar like the negative side it is also a system of authorization that is set up watch this to allow the operations of the holy spirit the operation of angelic forces the operations of the word of god to work profitably for that individual or that family a righteous or godly altar is a system of authorization a system of cooperation set up that allows the holy spirit that allows the angelic realm or angelic beings that allows the word of god to work profitably for an individual the bible shows us clearly that there are these two kinds of altars judges chapter 6 please 25 and 26 and it came to pass the same night that the lord said unto him koinonia follow carefully take thy father's young bullock this is gideon and even the second bullock of seven years old it says and throw down the altar of bell did you read that in your bible there is such a thing called the altar of Baal. That altar was funding something that was happening in the life of God's people and oppressing the people. Are we together now? It says that who built it? Your father. Read it there. That Gideon's father sincerely maybe built that altar and most likely perhaps maybe the person that was even gone already and yet the altar was still speaking there were people who were profiting because of this altar god himself said it's called the altar of baal he says cut it down by the grove that is in it and then when you are done he says now build an altar unto the lord don't leave it there two kinds of altar because in any case if you want things to change you don't just tear down you also build up now you understand what he told Jeremiah that I have set you over kingdoms and I have given you power to tear down, to uproot and then to rebuild. Let's finish that scripture. It says, build an altar unto the Lord upon the top of this rock in the ordered place and take the second bullock and offer a burnt offering with the wood of the groove and then which you cut down and so on and so forth so we see here that there are demonic altars and there are godly altars of righteousness this is very powerful how do you know that an altar is functioning in a life i will tell you how do i know what kind of altar is at work or is powering the results in my life you can know the presence of an altar in any life by the consistency of patterns and occurrences that happen the consistency of patterns and occurrences that happen the consistency of patterns and occurrences that happen whether positively or negatively the consistency of patterns that happen widespread poverty widespread prosperity widespread increase widespread defeat widespread open doors everybody in the family 10 children one is in south africa one is in nigeria one is in america and all of them are mysteriously prospering of course doing their due diligence but that there is a mysterious force backing them consistency of patterns and occurrences please let me your attention there are various kinds of occurrences that believers can use to test the presence of altars and to test what kind of altar is speaking in your life. Hallelujah. I think it was when I was doing let them have dominion or so, I thought about a few things that can, can follow people. There are families their own issue is mysterious occurrence of sicknesses 
bodily infirmity to the point that medicine has agreed today that you literally there is through genetics there can be transference of problems is that true a doctor can look at you and say high blood pressure do you have a case of this in your family you say yes so yes my father died of high blood pressure my grandfather died of high blood pressure or my grandfather died of prostate my father died of prostate and they say ah you're a young man that means you need to begin to manage this let me tell you the truth once you see consistency of occurrence is beyond willpower there is an altar there is an altar how about those who never have longevity of impact they will start but they never finish something eventually destroys them if it's in ministry there will be one trouble somewhere some trouble some scandal some something that tears them down if he's a businessman one trouble in one day he can turn from grass to grace so you find out that when those people achieve things they can't celebrate it because they suspect that the story is not over and they are right once that altar gives an instruction even if it's after 30 years you will crash like rain coming upon the ground only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end hallelujah now please I want you to be very comfortable to listen tonight and don't take my teaching personal. There's no point finding any offense. Are we together? Yes. There are people like that. I've seen brilliant people who love God with all their heart at the point of writing their final exams. When counseling them, they will tell you after conducting tutorials for others, they just blanked out like that. Until everything was done, it was as if they came back. What happened to me? There is a speaking. An instruction was given in the spirit. Like father, like son. Like mother, like daughter. Listen to what I'm saying because God sent me. Someone needs to be free this night. Hallelujah. Now, these altars, how many of you know that what you call IT today, it was built based on the system of altars. It's a programming, it's an algorithm. How do you own your laptop? The laptop does not know you, but it knows instructions. When you press the power button to you, you call it a power button. But at the back end, there is an algorithm that makes the laptop behave a certain way if you press that button. Anybody that presses that button, it will obey. That's how it is in the spirit. Are we together? Isn't it amazing that technology has borrowed from the system of altars? They literally, without being there present, they can use algorithms to not just predict but explain things. It's been used today to create all kinds of things. Business is literally, the social media runs on this concept. Altars. Hallelujah. Now, the problem is that if it is unfortunate for you, you can know what instruction was given in the realm of the spirit for your defeat by the patterns that happen to others it is not sickness but they will never make it it doesn't if you try to help them and you are not powerful that altar turns to you and fights you have you seen people like that now this is where sometimes the prophetic makes a mistake so they say certain things like ah you have this lady or this guy or this friend or this boss or this um um, employee brought bad luck they are not lying they are trying to explain that the people were innocent but they do not know that every time men come together they bring is altars that come together it's not just individuals when the devil wants to destroy you he looks for what is deficient based on the speakings of the altar fighting you and finds another person who has a speaking that will produce a double problem and bring both of you together now you may not know what the confusion is about beyond men men are conveyors of altars and these altars carry instructions are we together do you believe what i'm, I'm teaching you this is very powerful so you find out that there are certain altars that are like embargoes on people you 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 become part of a business 
the business starts going down and it's not a product I'm not, now listen 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 there is a place for lack of diligence and non-compliance with the laws of success are we together my discussion is with respect to the fact or based on the assumption that all other factors like diligence and hard work is in place are we together because if you are lazy perpetually even that act of perpetual laziness is sponsored by an altar is supposed to keep you non-productive for a reason there are families as soon as someone rises everybody starts becoming sick and the nature of the sickness is such that it will gob all the money and until they get into debt then something happens either the person dies or many other people become sick once there is poverty nobody becomes poor once they don't have money or nobody becomes sick once there's no money but let a breakthrough just come it's like an alarm system in the spirit and things begin to happen some of you keep wondering why is it that it is when certain things happen it's like there's somebody watching me it is not somebody it's a law the law is precise it does not get tired don't allow ignorance destroy you and <clears throat> well hallelujah Just when your boss wants to lift you, this altar strike again and the devil uses your face to oppress the man. He wakes up in the morning because he does not have spiritual intelligence. He assumes it is you. He just comes to the office. Sir, you said I should meet you. Don't come to my office again. And you are wondering, what did I do wrong? My brother, it's not what you did wrong. It's what was there before your arrival. That if you do not understand and deal with, you will live a defeated. You can be jumping and say, I'm born again. You are right. But you see, activating your liberty is based on rules of engagement. Who is learning? You detect the presence of altars by the consistency of patterns. Consistency of negative patterns. I have seen people who either by their own making or because God brought them into a family where they enjoyed a covering, their lives began to speak such profound blessings. You would see that the woman is only cleaning. Her job, maybe she did not go to school. She's only a sweeper. But do you know, the day she's sweeping, that's the day a big man will pass and say, I, I like the way you are sweeping. I've been thinking of someone to bless among the sweepers. How many children do you have? Four. Send them to me. I want to sponsor them. And you see that happen. By the time you are angry and say, let's move out to another department. You move out to another department while she's scrubbing the toilet. The man who will help her comes to ease himself again. Is once you see consistency, this is what Jacob carried. Laban said, No, we switch this thing, the result is still the same because there are patterns and it is a product of altars. Laban tried to cheat him, Laban tried to double up, it did not change anything because there is an instruction. They are taken for a prey and none say it, restore. Listen, let me tell you this. I don't want to bore you with history. I'm doing a, a summary. It's, it's paining me that I'm jumping so many important things. But I want to tell you this. You don't have to be bad or evil to be a victim of evil altars. For most people, they came into fraternity with dark powers in ignorance. They were sincerely looking for help like some of our great-grandfathers. They were not evil people. They needed their crops to be produced. They needed protection from wars. They had all kinds of diseases that would strike them and they would die. And there was no advancement in medicine. And the only way they knew was through priests and mediums. They would tell you that there's such a person. This whole community come into a covenant. The spirits will protect you. In return, your children's children to the fourth generation will serve them. And the innocent parents said, fine, it's a negotiation table. The realm of the spirit witnessed it. You were still in the womb of eternity when it happened. But the realm of the spirit is precise, like your phone number. 
it will find you no matter where you go except you know how to rebuild an altar that secures you listen I wish I were lying to you this work of ministry bar ministry is like medicine you have the opportunity to talk to people one-on-one -on -one. you have the opportunity to examine very serious situations by the privilege of God's grace not just by study I have seen firsthand the presence of altars I have seen people there have been people myself that I vow to help and in a mysterious way I forgot I had to pray and say no this can, this has to be demonic and they say sir I'm not offended that's how it has been it's been like that nobody who says you will help me that you even remember is a miracle so when you tell some people receive favor during miracle service don't blame them for not lifting their hands they are used to pain they know instinctively that there is a voice you see these things happen even in marriage wonderful beautiful lady a gentleman just comes how are you let me see your parents uh -huh. the altar does not touch you when you're in school go and read if you like become a professor the altar was not programmed to speak against your education it was programmed to speak against the children that come from you and then you find out the day you want to go and see your parents something happens you hear that the man just became mad he didn't just become mad my brother you see that ah, everything that is not of God everything speaking over everyone's life programming trouble in the name of Jesus you must be released this night hear me there are negative speakings and the instruction is that no child must bury their children it is no parent must bury their children it is children that, that bury their parents so you get into a community the oldest person is 45 because there is no length of days you get into another family and the old people remain old but they never have children where are the children here something always happens and they just die do you know if you don't have spiritual intelligence if you like become a pastor you stand on stage sincerely preaching Jesus with all your heart those altars don't care the only thing that brings them down is light not sentiments hallelujah I have watched this thing destroy people I've watched it destroy good people good people good people great grandmother was raped mysteriously and she loved the Lord the mother did not hear the story and did not know the story but as she grew up something happened maybe as a house held she was still raped again now the daughter third generation they are not even aware they've not discussed the story with one another the day they now discuss it they are all shocked different actors the same instruction the same instruction there are others who have destinies of kingdom financiers their great-grandparents were colleagues with those who are billionaires today it was in their prophetic destiny to be financial apostles but there was a speaking they would tell you that some of the before all this bank started my father was in the meeting and you are saying where's your father now he's dead why are we in poverty they will show you pictures of them and the founders of companies but there was an instruction never rise beyond a certain height listen i know what i'm saying if i'm cracking jokes with you i will crack jokes and we'll just laugh so you find people that when you speak with them you are asking but sir your issue is not laziness your issue is not lack of productivity why are you at this level because with the kind of value you have you should be at the presidency or you should be at UN and they say my brother it's not only me my grandfather was a genius he graduated with first class my father was a this I have PhD all my four ch children have PhD but nobody can bring a decent meal I remember many years ago in Port Harcourt, I met a woman truly wrapping up her PhD. She was working as a security person because she had to make ends meet. 
Alléluia. Please sit down. Sit down. You can detect the presence of altars. I'm not scaring you. There is a way out. But I want you to think for one moment. The many things that have happened around your life. Mysterious, consistent evil programmings. Whether towards you, whether towards your family, whether towards those you know. And sometimes it becomes more embarrassing when you are a Christian. This is why you must learn to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says there remained a rest for the people of God. He's not talking about unbelievers, but that even for the people of God, there remained a rest. Look at me. There are people, and I don't, I don't want you to get sad. Like I said, don't take it personal. How many of you know that there were people in this Abuja when land was 500,000? Till today, they don't own a house. It was not carelessness. Something tied their hands. They attended every seminar on real estate you know. They even helped to facilitate it. Till today, they don't have a house. When houses, when lands today that are hundreds of millions of naira were just less than one million. And it's not that it was lack. Some of them even had breakthroughs. Doors were open, five million, ten million. They cannot tell what they did with the money. Until today, their children are begging. You are passing a road and they'll tell you, you see this federal government road? It used to be land that I would have gotten at a platter of gold. What then happened? Life is not as haphazard as you think. Life is not as sentimental as you think. Let me tell you the truth. Life is largely a product of programmings and instructions. Programmings and instructions done by you or done on behalf of you. Instructions and programmings that produce blessings, that produce troubles. Number three, and this is where I want to focus on tonight. How to uproot demonic altars and how to set up righteous altars. This is what I want to dwell on tonight. How to uproot demonic altars. I hope that another time when we have to discuss by God's grace, I promise you that we'll do justice, we'll revisit everything again so that you will learn this concept of altars. I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me Yeah I show you the operation of altars Romans 8 verse 1 open our eyes oh God in the name of Jesus light there is therefore now no condemnation please pay attention now to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Please read verse 2 with me as loud as you can. One, two, go.
One more time. So, Paul is saying, I have now experienced liberty, but that this liberty has dynamics. 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 I'm seeing fire rising from the ground. I'm seeing fire rising from the ground. In the name of Jesus. Ah, tonight God is judging altars. Judging altars. In the name of Jesus, I'm still fire rising, just like rising from the ground. In the name of Jesus, let me speak already. Anyone who has been bound by any satanic, any demonic altar, in the name of Jesus, as you hear me speak now, may those influences over your life give way forever. Give way forever. Give way forever. Please be seated. Be seated. Let's hurry up. Are we together? So the Bible says, first three words, Romans 8, 2. For the law. For the law. The word law, L-A-W, there's an interesting word that I want us to consider. It doesn't mean the principle. It doesn't mean law like Old Testament. The word law there is the word operation. Replace the word law there with operation. Then you understand it now. For the operation of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the operation of sin and death. You get, you get it now? So he's not just speaking of laws. He's saying there is a programming. That's another word. For the programming of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had set me free from the programming. So what put him in bondage? Programmings. What brought him liberty? Programmings. Are we together? There is an operation that leads to the experience of liberty. There is another operation that leads to and keeps an individual perpetually in bondage. Now, People are victims of programmings. People are victims of not just circumstances, but programmings. There are laws. Paul is saying the law of the spirit. Are you seeing that he had to use another law to replace another law? Another operation. There was an operation called the law of the spirit of sin and death. But that for you to experience liberty... They had to bring another law called the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. And that is what set me free. Now, I've told you that evil altars and all demonic altars can be pulled down. This is something you need to know. All evil altars can be pulled down. And all righteous altars can be set up in place of those evil altars. So know that for a fact, that no matter how long an evil altar is, it can be torn down, it can be pulled down, even tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, write this down, please. Altars walk by speaking instructions in the spirit that must manifest in your life, if allowed. Altars walk by speaking instructions that means every altar has a voice. Altars walk by speaking instructions in the spirit that must manifest in your life if allowed. They walk by speaking instructions. They program instructions in the realm of the spirit. Those instructions are executed by spirits, executed by men, executed by systems and structures. For their final delivery to your life good or bad tearing down altars now i taught you something that i want to quickly recap so that you understand there is something called the reflection principle in theology please look at me they call it the reflection principle that means 
everything happens because of something it submits to are we together now so the moon shines because it submits to the light and the glory of the sun are we together when you see a tree grow spring forth and is producing fruits there is still an invisible part to that tree that you do not see and that is what powers the tree are we together now so the health of the tree or the health of the root is reflected in what produces the kind of fruit the kind of um uh, you know good structure that you see on that tree he shall be like a tree that is planted so because of where it is planted and the nourishment it gets from it it will now become like a tree that is flourishing are we together now i said that to tell you that every altar evil altar now please look at me there is a central altar that powers every evil altar you need to know this there is a central altar that powers every evil altar that means it doesn't matter which family those evil altars are speaking from there is a central altar that powers those evil altars and it is called the altar of sin and iniquity the altar of sin and iniquity the altar of sin and iniquity and there are three levels of sin very quickly now number one there's personal sin personal sin shortcomings as an individual number two there are territorial sins it is not something committed by an individual but it is something that is territorial like Nineveh are we together now if you were Nineveh even if you were a baby you will still suffer are we together there are times that the concept of sin that attacks the people is not personal sin you can sin as a person if we say we have no sin the Bible says we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us are we together but if we confess our sins the Bible says God is faithful and just to forgive us from our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness but there are territorial sins if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way then will I hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and heal their land there are territorial sins like Sodom and Gomorrah Genesis chapter 18 when you read from verse 21 to 23 the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was not just the sin of an individual it was a territorial sin number three there is sin based on foundation and bloodlines sin based on foundations and bloodlines based on foundations and bloodlines i think that should be psalm 11 verse 3 give us psalm 11 verse 3 and let me see if the foundations be destroyed what can the not what can men what can the righteous do even the if the foundations be destroyed what can the righteous do this is very powerful so all evil altars depend on this one altar to be able to function is called the altar of sin and iniquity you know what that means if the altar of sin and iniquity is destroyed all other altars cannot be powered they depend on the strength of this existing altar to fund and receive their energy to manifest that means no matter how you destroy, you pray, you bind, you cast individual altars. Once this altar is still at work, sin and iniquity, this altar, whether personal, territorial, or through bloodline, you will not be able to do much. It's the reason why people pray and shout sincerely and it looks like the realm of the spirit has no regard and has no respect for what they say. Now, very quickly, all godly altars, similarly, are powered by this one major altar it is called the throne of grace the throne of grace there is such an altar where god sits himself is an altar it's called the throne of grace this is the altar that powers every other altar the throne 
of grace the throne of grace the throne of grace the throne of grace there are many things that happen in the throne of grace one of it is the blood of Jesus I think Philippians 2 12 ye are come unto Mount Zion verse 12 he says um, did I get that right Hebrews chapter what now the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel find it for me please ye are come unto Mount Zion <coughs> the blood of sprinkling thank you unto the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels 23 to the general assembly the church of the firstborn which are written in heaven the judge of all the spirits of just men made perfect 24 yeah the and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling all found there that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel there are things that he speaks better than the blood of Abel now please listen carefully if you cannot access the throne of grace there is no basis for powering any other authorization the realm of the spirit only respects your speaking to the degree to which that speaking is connected to the throne of grace the Bible says we come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and grace to help in time of need to come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy mercy is found at the throne of grace and the grace to help in time of need is also found at the throne of grace are you learning so far now listen carefully please you stop the speakings of satanic altars by raising up another altar you stop the speakings of satanic altars by raising up another righteous altar that speaks consistent with God's desire for you you stop the speakings of satanic altars by raising up another altar now look up please today altars for us is not to rebuild stones and physical monuments are we together yes altar for the believer today in Christ listen carefully there is a big difference when Abraham Isaac and Jacob spoke of altars they meant physical monuments with animals upon them sacrifices as demanded by God but today we don't do all of those things unfortunately and I say this with all due respect I hear that there are many believers or pseudo Christian sects that are still involved in building physical monuments with all due respect it's not mine to condemn anybody but consistent with the word of God those things have been abolished the idea of altars for the believer now is not rebuilding physical things like putting a stone behind your house now I know that most of us have for instance what you call your prayer altar and what you mean is a room or a place you have dedicated unto God that is fine provided you don't idolize the place are we together now yes if it's a place for convenience dedicated between you and God to spend time that is fine but where you now idolize it and it looks like you cannot meet God any other place and you create a ritual out of it it now becomes destructive are we together now because worship today for us in Christ is not just in a place it is a state a spiritual state beyond a place you can be in church and yet you are not in church because you are not really there are we together Jesus said a time will come you will neither worship on this mountain or come here or do this and that but that the father is seeking those who worship him in spirit and in truth so God is more concerned about a state beyond a place you can be in the right place but not in the with the right heart when the day of Pentecost was fully come the Bible says they were gathered in one accord they were in one place but they were in one accord their accord was greater than the place the Holy Ghost did not come because the name of the place was upper room it was the state there was a state of unity and expectation and faith that allowed the Holy Spirit to come are we together now 
So there's nothing wrong in having a place dedicated in your home, your office, and so on and so forth, provided you do not build monuments out of it. But now, I'm teaching you that there is a system. When the believer talks of altars, you are talking of speakings and programmings. Listen carefully. Speakings and programmings. Speakings and programmings. Not physical objects. So when I say I have an altar, that means that your speakings and your programmings, are we together? They have become consistent enough to create instructions in the realm of the spirit that are pro-destiny, pro-kingdom. Are we together now? Yes. If you tell me you have an altar, meaning you build some stones, it doesn't matter where you brought the stones from. Are we together? There are so many things in my house. I have a simulation of the Ark of Covenant. It was given to me as a gift. So you see the Ark of Covenant. I don't worship it. It's just there to remind me that we have come a long way walking with God. Are we together now? If I'm eating bread and it falls on the Ark, I'll carry it and keep eating it. I'm not going to throw it away because it fell on uh, my Ark of No, Are you getting the point now? So it's beautiful. I like to see it. You know, it reminds me just, I have all these things around my house, eagles representing this, lion representing this, but you don't worship it. The challenge is when you now build a monument and now come and stand kneeling down in front of it. Ah, you have gotten into idolatry. You are worshiping an unknown God. Is someone learning now? I'm saying this because there have been all kinds of teachings about altars. And so that you do not generalize, there is a unique thought that we are trying to establish here. That altar for a believer now is not just about physical monuments. Even though, truly, the altars you may be cons considering, wanting to tear down, may have physical expressions with priesthood managing it. But that you do not counter that altar by building another physical monument. There is a more superior way of approaching it. And this is what I want to show you now. Pray in the spirit in one minute and ask the Lord to open your eyes. In the name of Jesus Christ. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh, I hope it's Yahweh, Yahweh. Are you praying? We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Right? How to tear down altars and how to rebuild altars of righteousness. We've established so far that with respect to the outcomes that these altars produce in the life of individuals and families, we have demonic or evil altars, we have godly or righteous altars. Altars being platforms, being tables of negotiations. Hallelujah. So when you say, I have an altar, it means you have created a platform and that the platform is created for the believer through words. Don't forget. Altars are built through words, largely, principally through speakings. Altars are built through words, not just physical monuments. Now, there are actions of obedience, and I'll come there, but the principal way that believers build altars is through speakings. Now, there is a law in the spirit I want to introduce to you now. This law was honored even by Jesus is called the law of substitution the law of substitution that means that there can never be a void at any given time when there's no darkness there is light there can never be a time where there is neither darkness or light if it's not morning it's night are we together are, are we together now yes the law of substitution. So, the law of substitution says that with respect to this now, watch this now, that you cannot stop outcomes by stopping them. 
you stop outcomes by replacing what should be are we together now it's it's you are substituting evil for good not stopping the entire process the concept of altars was so designed that at no point in your life should there be any void that means if there is no personal altar set up by you the altar before becomes your status quo are you getting the point now you don't have to consciously set up a negative altar if you do not rise up to define your possibility any altar available can hurt you and harm you for instance you don't need to plant weed no the seeds are scattered everywhere all it takes is for rain to fall and you begin to see weeds grow in your farm are we together now but there is a way that you can see certain farms and gardens manicured it looks like weeds never come up it's not true the potential for weeds are there it's only that the gardener has taken responsibility to do something upon that farmland every day so in your experience you never find weed there but it does not mean weed cannot grow are we together if at any point the gardener is careless and leaves the farm then you find out that weeds grow so you can discover a garden that for one year you never see it bushy and based on your experience you believe that weeds don't grow weeds can grow anywhere but the gardener if he's not putting insecticides he's mowing the grass he's doing something there is an action that is being engaged to keep that garden that way it's called the law of substitution now please look at me most believers and and I, I i i say this with humble submission humble submission humble submission most believers have been taught to tear down altars and then not have any altar around their life again so whether by prayer by breaking of curses generational curses whatever it is and so they say in the name of jesus i am free and then sometimes we men of god sincerely after praying for the person, the person falls, rolls on the ground, and then he stands up and he says, that's it, you are done. Go, you are free. Um, you are right, but you are wrong. Do you know why? Because according to the law of substitution, there must be a voice speaking. An altar must be speaking at every given time. If it is not the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, it is the law of sin and death. There is no such thing as void where nothing is happening neither good nor bad it does not exist maybe just in the mind of the individual who is learning so far i'm saying this because there is a responsibility component to administering liberty that if the saints are not taught they will remain defeated it doesn't matter the kind of deliverance that is conducted it doesn't matter the breaking of yokes and curses and whatever it is refer to my message complete deliverance I teach you there that there are three levels of deliverance number one casting out the spirit influences and then number two there is what we call deliverance through transformation the ministry of light transforming you by the power of the Holy Spirit and then the final phase is called the discipline of conformity where you have to now use your will empowered by the grace of God to walk in keeping with the factors that keep those spirits at bay show me anyone who practices these three things you will experience complete deliverance for most people their focus is the first area man of God pray for me I have bad dreams or oh, I have all kinds of patterns please help me and truly you pray for the person cast out that spirit and then the person is free and the person returns back you know why the demons are not afraid because they know that there are two other steps that were ignored deliverance through transformation the discipline of conformity so after praying for that person if you're a man of god here learn this when you minister to someone and is free from demonic spirit you don't just tell him okay that's all whether you are serious with god or not whether you are serious with church just go he will experience momentary testimonies by the next week he will return back and say you are such a powerful man of god you prayed for me that week i experienced promotion but the spirit still have a legal access to return because the programming in his mind remember my teaching that your mindset 
is your contribution to your own failure or your own success. Your mindset that has not been renewed can partner with those spirits and attract them back again. Hallelujah. Are we learning now? So you stop the speakings of altars by raising another system of authorization that speaks something otherwise. So for instance, an altar that speaks untimely death, an altar that speaks defeat, watch this, an altar that speaks sicknesses, an altar that speaks failure, an altar that speaks all kinds of trouble. You don't just say in the name of Jesus, I've come by the blood, I destroy this altar, it will never find place in my life again. Uh -uh. What else are you speaking? The Bible says the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things. Not speak another, not, not just speaks. Something was speaking before it came. Since the blood of Jesus was not there, the blood of Abel was speaking. And the blood of Abel speaks judgment. The blood of Abel speaks vengeance. Are we together now? Yes. There's no time to go there. You would have seen that when Cain killed Abel, the blood of Abel was speaking. And it spoke and God had it. He came and said, Cain, this blood is crying to me to speak vengeance. And on account of that, a curse was released upon him. He even had to cry and say, it's too much upon me. Everyone that sees me will hurt me. And a mark was put upon him. Even at that, he still became a fugitive and a vagabond. It was Cain, according to scripture, that was the first spearheader of the campaign of rebellion against God. After the fall of man. The Bible says Cain knew his wife and she bore him a son called Enoch. Are we together now? And now they built a city. He built a city after that name. That was what eventually graduated to what you would call the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11. I speak the blood, I speak the blood, I speak the blood. I speak the blood, I speak the blood, I speak the blood. I speak the blood, the blood, eternal cleansing blood. You don't have to cry, cause he has paid the price. I speak the blood, I speak the blood, I speak the blood. I speak the blood, I speak the blood. I speak the blood, the blood, eternal cleansing blood. I don't have to cry, cause you have paid the price. Listen, what I'm about to teach you now is what I did in my own life. It's not what I was taught, it's what I practice. I'm praying that your eyes will be open. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For someone, a way out has finally come for you. If you do not understand the law of substitution, you will never be able to silence the voices of evil altars and you will never be able to walk in dominion. Number one. The first key, when you want to tear down altars, you must also be ready to set up a righteous one. If you are not ready to set up a righteous altar, then do not waste your time trying to tear down one. Did you hear what I said? Every time you are tired of the speakings of an evil altar and you want to tear it down, then you must be prepared to take the responsibility of concurrently setting up a righteous altar that must be initiated by light, maintained by discipline. Number one, the first key to tearing down altars is breaking the hold of those demonic altars by engaging the blood breaking the hold of those demonic speakings
breaking the hold of those ordinances breaking the hold of those demonic altars or speakings by the blood by the blood by the blood by the blood who is learning you want to tear down demonic altars the first thing is not to start speaking oh my life is no 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 you are dealing with something serious and you are dealing with something that is on a legal basis i remember when i was doing um let them have dominion if you recall i taught you something that i want to repeat very quickly please look at me god forbid but let's assume an, i'm an armed robber and i come or came to steal in your house do you know the moment i hear the sound of anyone what will i do i will run away because i am stealing it's illegal are we together but let's imagine that someone lied to me that your house were his house are we together and that he could give me access to it and i now paid for it if i hear you coming will i run away no there is a legal basis so when you are dealing with legalities in the realm of the spirit there are rules of engagement are we together now you don't just cast and bind spirits arbitrarily please look up please look up as much as we love to cast and bind is the reason why our casting and binding does not produce results because when demons are operating based on altars there are rules of engagement not even jesus christ casted sin out of man as powerful as god is he did not cast sin out of man he had to come down to the earth are we together because a law is that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin and not even god as jesus christ could bypass that law are we together so when you want to dismantle evil altars the spiritual instrument that is responsible is the blood of Jesus my God I wish I had the time do you know why because you see the blood of Jesus is not the color red take that out of your mind that's not what we're talking about the blood of Jesus is not just the liquid that falls from a man even though there is a physical expression to that the blood of Jesus is a summation of the revelation watch this now the revelation behind He's becoming sin who knew no sin that an unjust man a just man took upon himself the cloak of being unjust are we together and that by that that spiritual law he died a death he did not deserve are we together now and that the basis of that death he did not deserve was that the man who deserved to die in him can now find liberty so every time you invoke the blood, what happens in the realm of the spirit is that a memorial is raised. Are we together now? That memorial echoes the fact that an unjust man went through something, I mean a just man went through something he should not go through. That means no matter the basis of the accusation, because of the liberty that just man has brought, you are free. That is the thing about the blood. You have to understand this. Now, most believers shout the blood of Jesus, but they don't even know what they are saying. Others just mean the liquid, the red liquid of Jesus, like that thing you transfuse to a patient who is not feeling well. You will never get a miracle that way. Blood is an instrument of mercy to you, but an instrument of justice before judgment. Most people think the blood is an instrument of judgment. No. It's an instrument of justice. It raises a memorial. The judge himself being God, not Satan. He is the judge of all the earth. So every time the ministry of the blood is invoked, that memorial is raised in the heavens. How that a just man, sinless, became sin, carried the sin of all the people. Are we together? Every accusation brought upon Jesus was false. So that every true accusation upon you by his verdict, you are also free. So, Satan has a name with respect to the ministry of liberty. He's called the accuser of the brethren. When it has to do with liberty, watch this. He's no longer a thief. Satan is not always a thief. He changes according to what he tries to achieve. When we talk about justice, you have to go to the court the high court the very court that the judge 
At that point, God does not just sit there as creator. He sits there as judge. The judge of all the earth. The accuser of the brethren comes. Are we together? And that he accuses the brethren day and night. What is the accusation? I have a right to oppress this family. The reason is that the grandfather called me through the spirits and the mediums and he said empower our farms in return i will give you all the female children in this family and i have maintained agriculture they have produced all the, you know from their farms i have maintained my own part now a young lady a young guy because he came for koinonia he's asking me to lose my 150 year old grip over that family it does not work that way watch this so if you now come and say well i think you must go no the system of justice must have a basis answer judicial people even when they met out judgment it is not based on sentiment according to section this subsection this this is the penalty that follows such a thing are we together do you know that in the court of law now i'm not a judge but i know this much that in the court of law you can have the truth but if you don't know how to communicate it you will still go to jail so having the truth is one thing knowing how to communicate it in a way that relates to the laws that govern you bring forth your strong reasons bring forth your strong reasons why should satan take his hands off your life because you are tired of him you are joking why should satan leave your family and your destiny alone because you are tired of him no sir there is only one basis for the liberty of the believer christ jesus and the sacrifice christ jesus and the sacrifice if you bring yourself and your righteousness the realm of the spirit reminds you that there are three kinds of sin personal sin territorial sin and sin from bloodline you may be free from personal sin but how about the territory you are part of a territory can sin it is still sin so when you stand before the judge of all the ages the basis of that victory is the speakings of the blood the moment you bring the blood into the equation every accusation doesn't matter how many years doesn't matter every decade because you see listen when God judges, he judges based on who he is. Not based on the situation there. When God judges, he judges based on his person. And the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate. You have to understand this. He is slow to anger and he is rich in love. God does not desire that any man perish. This is the character of the judge. Are we together now? The blood leverages on the integrity, the very nature of God with respect to what has been done in Christ. Once you engage the blood, watch this now. Satan has nothing else to say. Because the basis of Satan's operation is the fact that a human will was part of that negotiation. Are we together now? Somebody agreed satan you can invade this family and now you are saying he played his own part of the deal gave them whatever they were looking for fame or whatever it is now grandfather is dead now father is dead you have come into christ and the bible says those things should not hold on to you again just believing that they will never happen is a joke there are rules of engagement this is what i'm teaching you rule number one is that you must know how to engage the blood someone say the blood one more time say the blood. the blood so every time you say the blood of jesus don't just think liquid are we together now no think justice mercy to you or for you but justice translated as judgment to every other power ah, this is powerful 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 yes May Rama Chia do water Banda Wani Seke Yesu May Rama Gah 
Bandawayena Bandawani Sekai Yesu Merahama Jiatuata Bandawani Sekai Yesu Merahama Apostle, but your grandfather worshiped idols. Maybe you yourself even worship idols. And the Bible says, the soul that sinned, it shall die. It shall die if it does not come to the mercy seat. There is something called the throne of grace. You know one thing with the throne of grace? There is no qualification to get there. Christ is your qualification. The throne of grace does not have any entrance exam you write. You come. That is the throne that you can come as you are. Provided it is when you come that you encounter mercy and you encounter grace to help in time of need. Who is learning now? Look at me. Let me tell you the truth. I got to a point in my life where I took a careful examination of my life, my family tree, the realities that were before me. And I knew that I needed to dismantle a lot of altars. A lot of altars. You've heard my story. As a man of God, I was being oppressed by demons. Not many people will be honest to tell you this. People will just hide and make it look. It's a lie. There's no point hiding. Vulnerability is not weakness. That there was once upon a time. And because of the privilege of the prophetic i will be lying down in my room and i will watch these spirits enter it's not I, i'm not talking of it's I, you would see them i shouted jesus like the bible says i should shout it and they seem to be unaffected i knew that mm -mm, god has to be true there is something i do not know how could the name of jesus be so powerless no then i found out that the name was not in the chanting of it the name was not in the pronunciation. She had to water. Bandawani Sekai. Yesu. I remember engaging do you know I would lie down to sleep and have these demons press me I could hear people speak but to wake up it was drama I dreaded night times because the moment I do you know it got to a point where I would lie down at the edge of the bed it doesn't matter how wide the bed is I would lie down at the edge so that at least I would try it would look like I was suffocating to die Come on now. Altars. They are real. Oh. They are. You believe me on that. They are real. They are real. I know some of the healthiest people in the world. They, they, they are meticulous about anything. But they hit a certain age. Bam! And suddenly, they will tell you, it looks like there's some pain somewhere. And they tell you cancer. Or they tell you, some prostate or they tell you one demonic something you're lying down one day you just collapse and as healthy as you are you take orange every day banana every day they still say you have low blood pressure what must you take then there are people who stop eating rice 10 years ago they are still sick they stop eating cassava they stop eating yam i'm not saying i'm not giving you a medical advice i'm just saying what is left what is left? No rice, no yam, no eggs, no plantain, no cabbage, no nothing, no liquids. 
whether you are fasting or not these programmings have vowed that you must die what you need is the blood the blood the blood that father I come to you by the blood not in my righteousness that every demonic installation that predated my existence the Bible tells me I can bring forth my strong reason and I come to the judge of all the earth I come to the judge of all the earth I come before the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things hitherto these altars have been speaking negative things over my life over my family but I come by the blood and I invoke the blood the blood upon altars it doesn't matter what programming I, it, it may not be your fault it's not a cause to come from the family you came from but you need to do something about it now before it tears your life into pieces let me tell you the truth please look up one of the biggest challenges with the church is that we are not entirely honest with ourselves we are more conscious of our reputation than dealing with what needs to be dealt with so there are many people who have all kinds of troubles sicknesses they are hiding troubles that they should deal with it and we just carry this fashe of things working well victory is real there's no point faking it if it is not working take responsibility and iron it out in righteousness someone said the blood yes sir the blood because for some of you Based on the description, you are supposed to be the next physical priest right now as a medium to carry that thing. Based on the description, whether you know it or not. And there are some of you, there's this demonic thing. Now, uh, do I go into these things? hallelujah that you engage the blood you engage the blood you engage the blood that by the blood of the eternal covenant my grandfathers may have made their choice my great grandfathers may have made their choice but this man I have decided as an act of my will listen 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 now please listen listen I want to teach you how to do it and I want you to listen to me in establishing your case before the court of heaven there are two bases only two I want you to please listen number one the first basis for establishing your victory is what Christ has done what Christ has done the blood that was shed upon the cross the victory that is in Christ the sufferings of Christ the substitutionary sacrifice there you go with the word again if you ever approach the realm of the spirit advocating liberty from the negative speakings of altars and it is just based on your fasting or based on your prayer i'm not saying those things are wrong or based on church attendance any other basis outside of the sacrifice of christ is not valid enough the parliament of heaven was only designed to honor the sacrifice of Christ and whoever becomes a beneficiary of it through Christ. The second basis is the power of the will. I'm teaching you the rules of engagement now. The power of the will. This becomes the basis of your making a defense before God. That God gave everybody the power to choose. So what is happening in my life is not a reflection of my choices. And God is bound by his integrity to give me a chance to make my own choice. Who is understanding this now? So that believers must have spiritual intelligence. You don't just say, God, I'm tired of this trouble. You are in heaven. You are watching all of this. Do you want the devil to kill me before you're happy? You, all that lamentation does not lead to victory. There are two bases. This is how to approach the judge of all the earth. God is father, Abba, Bata. But when you are advocating liberty, you are approaching your father who is the judge. And you must know how to speak the language of the court of heaven. The basis for victory number one, the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. 
the blood that speaks better things the blood that has annulled everything calling you out from every tribe and every tongue and every nation Lord it is true that I am Yoruba it is true that I am Hausa it is true that I am Igbo but when I came into Christ I was grafted into a new kingdom and it becomes unfair for me to be a victim of the foundational limitations that came with my natural descent are we together the first birth I didn't have the power to choose so now in Christ the second birth is by choice the first birth you appeared Who is understanding this now you are speaking the language of justice so in addition to the substitutionary sacrifice of christ the bible says i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing but these spirits are not giving a room for me to choose because it looks like the oppression vetoes my will therefore god has to come in and give me a chance if i use my own will and i choose destruction then that becomes my lot but until then, everyone on earth by God is given an opportunity, even if based on the law of time and chance. The blood, the blood, the blood. I am no longer interested in serving the idols that were served before me. I am no longer interested in that discussion that happened across the table. Did you hear what I said? I am no longer interested because I'm a child of God because I'm a child of God and because Satan is a stubborn spirit he's not just going to say ah okay I've had you mm -mm, he's not like that oh it's not like that so the blood number one let's finish up I'm showing you how to dismantle demonic altars you break the hold of demonic speakings by engaging the blood the basis for that is the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Are you ready for step two? Step two also doubles as how you rebuild an altar of righteousness. You must engage what we call the covenant of sacrifice. And listen carefully, I'm not talking money. Pay attention so that you don't let the devil cheat you now because some of you are very, very interesting with matters of money. Once you hear sacrifice, ah, ah, there he goes. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> the sacrifice we're talking about here is not money at all the business of your destiny is more serious than naira and kobo are we together now did i speak about repentance yes part of breaking demonic strongholds is to also repent on behalf of yourself and on behalf of those connected to you without repentance the blood cannot speak I hope you know that the blood does not speak indefinitely the blood does not speak arbitrarily the blood is sponsored by a broken heart the activation of the power that is contained in the blood is sponsored by a broken and a contrite heart father I come before you admitting that my grandfather buried 30 virgins buried 20 children I admit the fact he may have gone but in the name of Jesus, the Bible declares that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and that the truth is not in us. I come in genuine repentance as one who has obtained mercy in Christ. And upon that ground, even the finished work of Christ, I advocate mercy over the legal speakings. You see that? Then number two, the covenant of sacrifice. Let's deal with that because I want us to pray. Now, the covenant of sacrifice is a very serious covenant. It is not a one-off covenant. Please listen, everybody. The covenant of sacrifice is the other part to this equation of rebuilding altars that many believers have not been interested in. The covenant of sacrifice is not a one-off sacrifice. Please listen. It's not a one-off sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that must be initiated activated and maintained consistently if you want to walk in the reality of victory hallelujah the first object you are going to sacrifice if you want to rebuild an altar of righteousness that perpetually shuts every evil altar is your life your own life romans 12 and verse 1 you want to rebuild an altar of righteousness 
the first sacrifice that it demands is you total surrender total surrender I beseech thee, brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies not just your spirits who is learning your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable sacrifice now look at me there are many believers who do not want Satan to have a legal claim or a hold of their life but a part of them is still not dead to Christ for as long as there is still a part of you that is not interested in the things of God Satan still has a hold the Bible says Satan come to me Jesus is speaking now and he come to me and found nothing there are many believers today when Satan comes he will still find something that gives him a legal basis the sacrifice of your life do you know there are people who want to be delivered but not to be born again they are not interested in being born. Don't talk to me about being born again. Don't talk to me about being serious with God. Just cast out this demon and let me go. How much is it? If you need money, I can give you. Unfortunately, the first sacrifice is not money. It is your own life. A committal to knowing Jesus, loving Jesus, living for him all the days of your life. If you are not prepared Look at me. How many of you know that every altar is maintained by priesthood? I didn't teach you that. Priesthood is the spiritual system that maintains altars. Are we together now? It fans the coals, the ambers, so that those speakings continue. When the priesthood that powers an altar fails, the operation of that altar will fail. The altar is as powerful as the priesthood that keeps it you know thriving and for many people they do not know that every altar that speaks against you has men and systems that have literally sacrificed their lives i want you to believe this there are people who don't do any other thing except to maintain altars and there are strict demands some of them because of the kind of office that they have to maintain those demonic altars there are times they don't see the sun for one week for whatever it is you see the men looking as if they are dead but they tell you this is the priest in charge of this altar are we together the law of sacrifice is a non-negotiable condition your entire life Lord I offer my life since I'm not going to serve Satan I will follow you wholly since i'm not going to serve satan i will follow you wholly there's no such thing as i won't serve satan and you too i'm still considering you are with satan immediately automatically the altar returns who is understanding are we together yeah i won't serve satan all right choose you this day lord i'm for you with my life i pledge my life to serve your purposes i belong to you this is the decision that many people have not made today is the reason why their advocacy to be free from the speakings of altars still has a hold of them when we challenge people to be serious with God is beyond just going to heaven it is engaging this law of sacrifice are we together sacrifice if Baal be God serve him if God be God, serve him. And Elijah says, let the God that answer by fire, let him be God. When it was time for destruction, Moses, who is on the Lord's side, this way. Any other person, if you are not sure, you are on the other side. And every one of them, the earth opened and swallowed them. It's a realm in the spirit called Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ that liveth in me and the life that I live today in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me believers please hear me for as long as you are still playing games with the altars 
that are killing, stealing, and destroying is a matter of time. It will catch up with you. Your real freedom is on your becoming the living sacrifice. Before your prayer, before your fasting, before your giving, your life. Who is learning tonight? There are people who will come to church even if the series is rapture, they would never be born again. They will watch people cry and say, Kai, this thing touched me, but make an altar call. They would never come out. Now, I'm not condemning you, but listen, let me tell you the truth. You are authorizing these altars to destroy your life. And let me tell you how God delivers families. Kai, this thing, ba, I, I feel so pained in my heart. God, God will grant us grace. We'll revisit this thing. Every time God wants to step into a family, he does not call all of them. He waits for the first person who shows interest in him. Did you hear what I said? The first person. So what God does when he wants to deliver a family is to set up a burning bush and he will wait for five years, for ten years, as people are growing, dying, moving, one day somebody will turn and see that burning bush. I want to show you how it works. Now that first person who turns, God will say, please come. I've been wanting to visit this family, but I cannot force you. I've been creating the burning bush, the dreams you've been having, the visions you've been having, the prophetic words you receive in the bus as you are passing. All of those things are signs, signs. Now listen, listen, listen. All God needs in every family is one representative, one. It could be more and it's great if it's more, but one out of a family of idol worship. Here comes a young lady, frail lady, came for koinonia, got born again in koinonia and God says, regardless your gender, can you give me a chance? We, we, I need to use your destiny on a project. There are things we need to clean up. There are things we need to work on. Else, your children and your children's children will have these patterns because there is a voice speaking. Hallelujah. Finally, after much convincing, he finds one lady or one man or one old man because no one else was available or one young teenager because all the youths are busy looking for money but in any case let him find one man that's it from that one man he now says Moses you will be a deliverer but the way you are now you can't go to Pharaoh I can't send you this way you are ill equipped the destiny is to advocate an exodus. So all the trainings that I'm subjecting you through is not for yourself. I'm speaking to someone now. For five years, you've been in the school of the spirit. It is the making of that deliverer. Because there are not many in your family who are willing to give God a chance. Now that he's found you, he doesn't seem to let you go. He's insisting on you. Insisting on you, insisting on you, insisting on you, insisting that you must carry that anointing, insisting that you must build that capacity, insisting a sacrifice of your life, a sacrifice of your life. Building that capacity, building that formation, equipping you with the tools because you are going to be confronting altars, altars older than you, altars older than your grandparents, altars older than your parents. Now the question is, who is willing to give God a chance with your family, give God a chance with your life to say, Lord, like Isaiah, here am I, send me, make me, then send me. Let my mother not die. Make me and then send me. Let my father not be destroyed. My siblings may not be as spiritual, but before they catch up, I am available.
available. Available. This cause of poverty over this family, I am available. This cause of women not remaining in their husband's homes, men not remaining in their wife's home, this cause, this cause of untimely death, this cause of mysterious sicknesses, this cause of being a graduate and there's no job, no product, no matter what it is. Lord, I am available. I am available. I'm available. My intent is for every one of my family members to be saved and used by you. But you can start with me. You can start with me. King of glory, you can start with me. You can build me. You can make me. You can furnish me. I don't mind the fire. I don't mind the furnace of affliction. Let it make me like the porter and the clay. Build me until I become. You've heard my story. One of those nights, I was praying and fasting, crying out. And then my ceiling just disappeared. And I saw this creature, giant creature with eyes as big as the head of a human being. Red fierce eyes, looked like a dinosaur, having a tail that had its own life. And it was looking at me. And he spoke to me. He said, so you think you want to bring God's people into abundance? I said, so this is the spirit. I know that lack of productivity leads to poverty. But make no mistakes about it. There are spirits. There are programmings that enhance poverty. There are people who have the boat, the net, the fishing skill. But they never catch fish. Their issue is not laziness. When I saw that, I said, this is it. I will never serve the gospel begging for bread. I will never raise a people begging for bread. But I confronted that spirit. I saw him, he saw me. Thanks be to God. Every devil knows what victory is. This thing is beyond buying and selling. You know? There is a realm where you stamp some things in the spirit. And you return back to the earth and it will be as if you are holding a charm on your hand. Men eager to favor you doors opening for you and people say you are lucky no you are not lucky you are victorious victorious is the word not lucky victorious hallelujah listen you've heard the story that one time I had this vision and I was serving people bread there was some machine sit down for one moment there was a, a machine that was manufacturing the bread and the honey but I was the only one who was seeing it and there was a long queue of people and then I would hold the bread and put honey in between and people were queuing and I would give it to them and they would eat and go and gather their family members and return back they thought I was the one making the bread but I was the only one who was seeing the machine it just makes the bread and cuts it mine is just to hold and serve and I saw that, I said, this is it. This is the mystery of sufficiency. Having enough to give at all times because there is an energizing that though invisible is real. There is something God can do to a man that makes you sufficient at all times. Hallelujah. Now, I love my family, I love where I come from. But I saw certain things that happened to the men that I said, this thing has to be stopped. Especially the firstborn men. Now, I know to many people it doesn't matter, they say it doesn't matter. Well, save Johnny. Thank God everybody has his destiny to live. But it does matter. You see, let me tell you how Satan operates. He does not strike at all times, especially when he sees pride. When he sees pride, he allows it to grow. So you would think you are free because he has not come. He can be patient for 10 years, allowing your pride to bloat. You call it victory. Then one day he hits you in a way that you will now say, so that school of the spirit I jumped. This is what is happening to a lot of people. A lot of people think because the devil has not come around their vicinity, they are free. 
Many gyrated and made that kind of noise. Some for 20 years. Some after 30 years in ministry. 35 years in ministry. Just when they thought they were about to rest. He said, no, the altar still speak. He came. There's no taking chances with this thing. Better verify that what you call liberty is liberty indeed. So that you are not celebrating shadows in ignorance. Just because the devil is quiet does not mean you are free. I'm not glorifying Satan. I'm opening you up to the truth. Dominion cannot happen if you do not understand altars. Whether it is Satan you want to serve or God, there must be altars. There are covenants with God by the mercies of God that run this ministry you see. There are altars. There are speakings. There are things God said to do that if it is done, this ministry will never go down. There are things in the Bible we learn generally, but there are personalized instructions. One of them is if you can let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. If you can hide behind the cross and leave this blind pursuit of fame, this blind pursuit of name, man of God, MOG, run away from that deception. And I said, that's it, Lord. For you to be lifted high, all I want is for you. For you to be glorified. For you to be lifted, all I want. You know, someone, no, no, I'm saying this just, just to joke with my people. Someone made a statement and said, he's watched all our revival meetings. He said, we arrange a program like Koinonia. There's no special introduction to Joshua Selman. And I'm saying, there's nothing wrong with introduction. I say, if I go to preach somewhere else, they can introduce me. But I don't have time for that. It's just my, it's not, it's not like it's wrong. I don't have that time at all. Once it's time to preach, I wait impatiently. Once it's my turn, get out of the way for me. Let me do what I was born to do. You see that now. Now, it may not apply to everybody, but I'm telling you, one of the things you learn in rebuilding altars, please listen, I'm about to make a statement now. There are truths you will find from scripture, but in rebuilding a personal altar, God is going to demand certain specific covenants from you that is not general. If this does not happen to you, you are talking to a familiar spirit, not the God of the Bible. If it is the God of the Bible, are we together now? In rebuilding a covenant, there are secrets and mysteries unique to you that he will give you. And these instructions may not make sense to everyone. That's why you do not teach it as a doctrine. If you teach it as a doctrine, you will confuse people and mislead people because it can bless you but can destroy another. And depending on the gravity of the assignment, the instructions can be so strict even to your personal life. It is true. There are times because of the nature of the mantle and the oil you are carrying, God will tell you, my advice for you, you cannot have more than three children. You can have as many. But this is my terms with you. If you want to host this grace as safe as possible, these are the terms. The degree of compliance is the degree to which you will command power within creation. Now, you can't go around telling people if you have more than three children, you are wrong. No. But this is your personalized dealing. For some, God can give you an instruction and say, because of what I'm telling you, you cannot have 1,000, 2,000 houses around. No. No matter what it is, I need a certain level of consecration from your life that protects this oil. That's why I call it the covenant of sacrifice. Let me tell you this. We live in a world that disrespects people's covenants with God. Because when you see certain things happening, it looks very cheap. It looks very easy. But behind the exploits of the saints, there are both unique expressions of obedience from scripture and personal covenants, sometimes strict inconveniencing covenants. Hallelujah. If you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. 
You think I'm not human? That I want, we have the level of influence to program a system of fame for myself. But you can choose to do what you want to do and reap the consequence of disobedience. Or you can choose to hide behind the cross and allow that fire to continue to burn. Who is learning? Let's find a place to pray. So number one, your life. The second way to engage the covenant of sacrifice. I'm showing you the ways to engage the covenant of sacrifice. Number one, by offering your life. I hope we're still together. Number two, through prayers. Leviticus chapter 6, 12 and 13. The second way you engage the covenant of sacrifice in dismantling demonic altars and rebuilding and sustaining godly altars is to engage the ministry of prayer as a lifestyle. Why the ministry of prayer? Because prayer affords you the platform to verbalize your will and to verbalize your interest. Leviticus 6, 12 to 13. Let's read together. 12 and 13. When you're done writing, ready? One to go. And the fire. Come on, let's read with energy. Let's start again. One to go. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. Ah. And he shall burn thereof the fat and the peace offerings. 13. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. This is called the covenant of sacrifice. You want to command dominion. There are three entities that are mentioned there. One, the altar. Two, priesthood. Three, fire. The Bible says the priest shall put wood every morning. Every morning, not every weekend. Every morning. You want the altar to keep burning, to keep speaking blessings, to keep speaking faith. You pray not as a response to tragedy. You pray not as a response to calamity. You pray as a lifestyle, not governed by fear. It is the modus operandi of dominion. So every morning, you are signing that spiritual register. I am a priest maintaining this altar. The altar that speaks favor. The altar that speaks blessings. The altar that speaks speed. The altar that speaks open doors. The altar that speaks ever increasing glory for koinonia. It is found through the covenant of sacrifice. Let me tell you the truth. Like every human being I admit to you. There are times that I get very tired. You have no idea. But it's a covenant. I know I have to get up. I know I have to pray. Sometimes you are tired. I return from meetings. I don't even know if I'm awake or I'm asleep. But in the name of Jesus, sometimes I just cry to God for strength, put my head for a few minutes, but I remember. I remember my destiny. I remember you. I remember the terms God gave me. And it brings energy. Lord, I obtain grace. I must sign that register. Shama Kaparakota. It starts with sleepy eyes. It starts with a draggy voice. But soon, what you see becomes greater than what you are feeling. Let me tell you this. Never stop prayer because you are sleepy. Now sleep, but don't stop prayer because you feel sleepy. There is a supply of strength that will eventually swallow up. Satan knows our bodily limitations. So he will tell you, you are, you are human. Now don't get me wrong. There are times I sleep off. I remember one day I was praying. I knelt down. I'm telling you, I knelt down with seriousness. My Bible was, I was typing. I can't even remember that I stopped typing. I know I was tired. That's the last thing I remember. And it was not a vision. It was not anything. I just slept like deep sleep, kneeling down there. I just got up and I said, well, Lord, you, you, we do not have a high priest. You cannot be touched. Jesus slept on his way to a crusade ground. On his way to a crusade ground. Honest admission. Honest admission. It's not 100%. I sleep, oh. Sometimes you get honestly tired. And while you are praying, dragging, just saying, and mercy, grace, mercy, grace. It's not because that's the only thing you know. It's just that that's the only thing that can sustain you at that time. But you must pray. Most of you have not yet seen prayer as a covenant, as a priesthood duty. 
So when things are fine, you don't pray. Until there is tragedy, then you quickly come. That fire brigade epileptic spiritual lifestyle cannot produce dominion. Pray for me, pray for me is good. I'm committed to praying for you. But let me tell you the truth. Everyone must leave this place knowing that you don't rebuild an altar by putting stones. You rebuild an altar by putting in the wood every morning. You wake up. Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus, Shalika Parantoski Aparatosiata. This is the day that the Lord has made. I speak into this day. I speak into my children's day. I speak into the day of my husband, my wife. I speak over my parents. They are unbelievers. I'm trusting for their salvation, you may say. But Satan, you have no hand in their life. I stand as a bridge. Before they meet Christ, they enjoy the safety. Who is understanding this? Now, let me tell you this. One of the reasons why Satan stops people from coming to church is because he knows that there are certain battles in the spirit that you cannot fight alone. You will need higher graces and you will need the corporate anointing. So you may be doing well in terms of your personal prayer altar, but there are times that you need to come to the house of the Lord. Are we together? And under that intense corporate anointing, you are encouraged certain victories and certain results are wrought in your life. When we invite people to church, it's beyond just membership. It's beyond just gathering a crowd for a name. It's an advocacy to see. It's like an ark. It's like Noah's ark. Someone say, I will pray. You see the reason why Satan insists on prayerlessness. Don't say I'm not the prayer type. That means be ready for negative speakings from altars. Nobody is born the prayer type. You make yourself so by revelation. Go back home this night and whilst you sleep, don't snore yourself into the morning. Thank God for technology. An alarm clock is there. Don't say the Holy Spirit will wake me. That's irresponsibility. You have not gotten to that level of maturity. And even if he wakes you, your, your indiscipline will not allow that to happen. So don't tempt God. Get your alarm clock. Sanaka parantos kia baratos. Rakate barika katos yata. If you are if you, sleeping on your bed is causing you to sleep and get up, start moving. Shanika parantos kiata. Rekete baratu kasia. You are starting the day. Carry your files. Lay your hands on it. In the name of Jesus, I am a businessman. I go forth with joy. I am led forth with peace. I decree and declare that creation hears my voice. I attract destiny helpers. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that no enchantment, no divination against me can work i stand it is for freedom that christ has set me free in the name of jesus i declare that i'm not going back no ordinance of darkness no arrow that flies by day no noisome pestilence against me and mine will prosper i am Bula. i am hepzibah i'm like a well-watered garden all who see me seek to bless me because the hand of the lord is upon my life the wisdom for my days at work in me the priest putting fire upon the altar and the man gets to the place of business and finds out that in an extraordinary way God is helping you you frustrate Satan when you create that prayer life the covenant of sacrifice is engaged by the sacrifice of your own life wholly loving the Lord and serving the Lord number two the covenant of consistent prayer as a lifestyle Prayer points or not, consistent word-based prayer. And then number three, giving. The third way you engage the covenant of sacrifice is giving. And giving is also threefold. Your time to serve God, your energy to serve God, and your resources to serve God. Unfortunately, pastors seem to zoom down on the resource part. I don't know why. But greater than the money, you want to be free from demonic covenants and rebuild an altar that speaks blessings. You must give your time to serve God, your energy to serve God, and then your resources to serve God. Hallelujah. In spite of the fact that there are conferences lined up, there are people to see, there's whatever to be done, I must do my due diligence as a man of God over you. 
and once we are done regardless how tired i am my whole life belongs to him time energy resources i don't compartmentalize my life there is no aspect of my life that belongs to god and then another belongs to me everything belongs to him so when satan comes around my life he finds out that i am god's property completely the part of you that is not god's property is the part he will attack hallelujah are we together everybody say giving joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. if it seem evil to you to serve the lord choose ye this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the amorites in whose land ye dwell let's read the last sentence loud clear with faith in your heart ready one to go but as for me one more time me and my house means me and my business me and my house means me and my company me and my house means me and my vision ministry me and my house means me and everything i own everything i have everything under my care must serve my god are we together you cannot serve god and your business serves idols no you cannot serve god even if your children or your spouse is not yet serving the lord that should become your prayer assignment lord in their lifetime let them be saved we rebuild altars tearing down old ones by number one breaking the hold of demonic altars demonic speakings by engaging the blood through repentance and through administering the blood number two we engage the covenant of sacrifice the sacrifice of our lives giving ourselves wholly to God the sacrifice of prayer prayer and I hope you know prayer goes with light of Scripture your prayer life is as rich as your knowledge of the word if your knowledge of the word is poor so when I talk of prayer I'm not saying to choose prayer against scripture. That, that is already defeat. What gives strength to your prayer life is the strength of your spiritual understanding. And then number three, giving. Your time, energy. I tell you this and I submit to you in the name of the Lord as we wrap up. I made a covenant with God that there is nothing I have today, especially resources, that does not belong to him. There is no kingdom project that this ministry or any ministry I know and love and respect that wants to be part of and I have a chance to be part of it that I fold my arms. And it has nothing to do with having all the money in the world. It is a covenant. If you don't use your time to serve God, you will use it to serve Satan. If you don't use your energy to serve God, you will use it to serve Satan. If you don't use your resources to serve God, you will use it to serve Satan. You may not serve Satan by serving Satan, but you will serve the needs that he brings for you. The endless needs that translate to pain and disappointment. This is what I did with my own life. Everyone who has experienced true liberty in Christ, this was the pathway. I did not pray, I still pray. I did not give, I still give. I did not just commit myself to God. I still commit and rededicate my life. Show me a believer that is ready to engage this, to engage the blood in genuine repentance, denouncing the works of darkness. Are we together? Advocating mercy by the blood. Number two, show me a believer that understands the covenant of sacrifice, the sacrifice of your life, wholly loving and following the Lord. The sacrifice of, um, what's the second one again? Prayer. Engaging the prayer altar. And number three, the sacrifice of giving of your time, your energy, and your resources. I show you one person who has put an end to the reign of darkness. Like that gardener who will never even give weed a chance to grow. Because in this life, demons, we are not given liberty to bind demons and trap them in one place indefinitely. They have a legal right to operate within the earth. And their legal right is because there is still one more person alive 
who has freely donated his will are we together now satan should not be an a legal occupant but because there is one person created in the image of god who has still donated their will satan will still latch on that one person to operate upon the earth your assignment is not to bind them and keep them somewhere trapped forever that liberty is not given to you yet your assignment is to sanitize your spiritual environment to drive them at bay that they do not become interruptions to your becoming to your serving the purposes of god and living a victorious life who has learned something tonight our time is up but spare me five minutes let's do some prayer please rise up on your feet Pratina has I'll give you three quick prayer points. Prayer point number one. Father, if there is any legal basis upon which Satan will lay claim on my life, I advocate the blood right now. Please go ahead and pray. If there is any legal basis, if there is any legal basis, the psalmist said, if I cherish iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus. Take a minute to pray. Every legal basis. The sin of commission, the sin of omission. I obtain mercy by God. I obtain mercy by God. Sins of bloodline. I obtain mercy by God. Territorial sins. I obtain mercy from God. Open your mouth and pray with humility and brokenness. One minute. In Jesus' name. Now, I want you to begin to take authority in one minute. As simple as what I'm saying is, I'm releasing my faith with you that every speakings of every altar that is not of the Christ in the name of Jesus be silenced by the blood go ahead be silenced by the blood be silenced by the blood go ahead pray pray don't trivialize the simplicity of spiritual intelligence pray every ill speakings powered by demonic altars advocating defeat advocating delays advocating untimely death advocating poverty advocating closed doors by the blood of the eternal covenant i come against you i dismantle those altars someone pray i come against you i dismantle those altars by the blood of the eternal covenant I come against you. I dismantle those altars. Attracting tragedies to my life. Attracting wicked men to my life. From one destruction to another. From one trouble to another. In Jesus' name we pray. Now you're going to cry for grace to engage this covenant of sacrifice. Lord, grace to follow you wholly. Grace to commit to a life of prayer consistently. And grace to dedicate my time, energy and resources to serve you. Go ahead and pray. Grace. Obtain that 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 grace. Sape la caparanta capera co sevra gete belekepa. Shai gana malanta frasca bena catosi a cafretis keti. Obtain that grace. In the name of Jesus, obtain that grace. Grace to follow the Lord wholly. Grace to follow the Lord wholly. Follow the Lord wholly.
grace to commit to a life of prayer speaking realities daily rewriting stories daily declaring my will daily making my contributions to the manifestations of God's word in my life daily obtain the giving grace the grace to give God your time the grace to give God your energy the grace to give God your resources not by manipulation by revelation in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray I want to make the altar call quickly we're out of time and then I'll speak over your life and we're done I don't have to cajole you after such a service you need Jesus you need Jesus quickly you need Jesus now the power of the cross the power of the blood is the key I told you that every demonic altar is powered by this central altar of sin and iniquity and for someone you came to church as you heard me speak the Holy Ghost began to speak to you make it right with God now I will count one to five leave your seat quickly and come and stand here one God bless you God bless you don't give Satan a chance with your life God bless you come come God bless you God bless you perhaps you may be the first God is counting on to dislodge this satanic demonic altars don't let Satan win over your life he's giving you an opportunity to make it right come don't say there are many people in front uh-uh uh-uh this is a personal business of destiny come keep clapping koinonia let's celebrate them as they come apostle I want to make it right with Jesus my grandfather could not make it right with Jesus my father could not make it right with Jesus but here's my chance to make it right here's my chance to give myself wholly and completely to this one who died for me come come keep clapping ten more seconds and we'll begin to pray if you're coming make your way please those following online God bless you as you come God bless you as you come no matter how bad things are, Jesus wants to give you a new beginning. Make your way here. Hallelujah. I want to thank all of you for making this noble decision. Listen, everything you've heard me preach tonight is true. And I want you to know that your coming here is an indication that you are closing a door permanently to darkness, to failure, to mediocrity, and you're opening up a new chapter in your life. And I salute your courage, young and old, male and female, thank you. Lift your right hand high above your head. Please say this after me as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I love you with all my heart. I declare that I cannot help myself except you help me. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name we pray I pray that the grace that keeps me, that grace keep you. You walk in righteousness and from tonight it's a new story for you. In Jesus name I pray. Please look to my right, that will be your left. There are counselors who are waving the placard. Do cooperate with them, they will have a word with you very quickly and then you will return to your seat. Let's celebrate them as they go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay. Um, let me just appreciate the presence of um, a dear woman of God, the 
Deaconess Ibiso Adebisi, the wife to the Executive Secretary of Living Faith. I understand she's here. God bless you, ma. Uh, okay, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We're honored to have you in our midst. May God bless you, you and all that came with you in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to receive? Let me speak over your life and then we're done. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over everyone here under the sound of my voice. Every altar speaking against your life. It doesn't matter what it is speaking. By the blood of the eternal covenant, those voices and the effects of their speaking come to end now. Those speakings of the altars come to end now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let a new altar speak righteousness, speak favor, speak blessings, speak advancement, speak restoration, speak increase, speak new levels, speak advancement, speak multiplication. In the name of Jesus, everywhere the altar has spoken death, I speak life. Everywhere the altar has spoken poverty, I speak increase. Everywhere the altar has spoken curses, be blessed. Everywhere the altar has spoken delay, I declare go forward. In the name of Jesus, everywhere you have been stagnated in life and destiny, as a result of this prophetic declaration, let your wilderness become a fruitful field. Let your wilderness become a fruitful field and let your fruitful field become a forest. In the name of Jesus, someone shout it, say, I am free. One more time, say, I am free. For the last time, say, I am free. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name.